right. Okay. See a bunch of tulips. Yep. And then you want to go down to the, you can um, do it the whole thing as a slide program. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There. Better. Okay. All right. So sorry about all that. I was kind of facing it because I was up very late picking stuff last night. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, we all were. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have coolers and coolers and stuff. So anyway, let's get started with fall right. branch well, Eric, planted bulbs for Wyoming. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. All right, everybody. Well, <laughs> Kathy, mm -hmm. thank you for joining us. and. Can, I consider Kathy Shreve to be our resident bulb expert where I am not. And Kathy heads up the bulb sale for Laramie County Master Gardeners and anyone else who'd like to buy bulbs from us, it's open to the public. And she has the most amount of experience with bulbs and is an excellent teacher. So I'm gonna turn everything over to Kathy Shreve. All right, so sorry everybody, I was a little late. I had some computer issues. Plus, like I said, I was up till two in the morning trying to pick everything and get everything preserved. So just bear with me a little bit, okay? So this talk is about fall planted bulbs for Wyoming. And there are a lot of reasons to grow bulb forms or and or tubers. I'm gonna kind of lump all those things together, although they are slightly different. So the biggest reason is bulbs, forms, and tumors, tubers are usually much, much cheaper than perennials. Each bulb, form, or tuber is usually less than a dollar, and an equivalent perennial plant is somewhere between seven and twenty dollars. So if you got a lot of area to cover, you can see that this would be a much more uh, cost-effective way to get some color in your landscape. Most, most bulbs are from climatically similar areas, such as Mongolia, Turkey, and the Middle East, areas that have hot, dry summers, cold, dry winters, with most moisture falling in the spring or fall. Does that sound familiar to you? We are very similar to that. They're very easy to plant. Instead of, instead of having to dig a hole for a one gallon or a bigger pot, you just need a little hole to fit the bulb in. And they're some of the biggest, brightest, most eye-catching flowers you can grow. Plant a bunch of them and you'll be the envy of all your neighbors. So why don't more gardeners use bulbs in their landscape? Maybe because for most, the word bulb equals those big red tulips. And most people buy those big red tulips in big bags at big box stores. And most of those fancy hybrid tulips have been overbred and hybridized to the point that they're not reliably perennial and have to be replanted every year. I, for one, don't want to replant my whole garden every year. I don't know about you, but that is not on my agenda. I just don't have time for that. But thanks to good, thank goodness, there are so reliably perennial bulbs that you can buy and plant for bulb gardens that return year after year getting bigger and better every year. And I'll show you how you, show you, how you can uh, figure out which ones are the perennial ones and which ones to buy. <clears throat> in addition, there are bulbs that bloom in the spring, bloom in the summer, and bloom in the fall. You can have year-long color in your, well, you know, season-long color in your bulb garden where you're not going to get bulb color in January, of course, in Wyoming. They're easy to interplant into your existing landscape, especially if you own a sturdy corded drill and a large pit. You can just drill holes and poke them in the holes. They require very minimal maintenance. There are tall selections, tiny selections, fragrant selections, and selections in almost every color. Something to suit everyone's taste. There are bulbs that love sunny, dry areas, bulbs that love shady, wet areas, bulbs that like it dry, and bulbs that like it wet. Most bulbs love the Rocky Mountains because they're just like where they grew up. So for the perennial tulips, I'm talking tulips here, these are the classes that you want to look for. You want to look for the Kaufmanii tulip, Gregii tulip, Emperor tulip, most species tulips. You do have to be a little bit careful there because some of them are not cold hardy here. So pay attention to the cold hardiness zones on those and giant Darwin hybrid tulips. 
those are the five classes of tulips that you can get to return reliably every year in your garden here in Wyoming. And generally speaking, they're the cheapest ones too. Daffodils and narcissus, almost any of those, except for the Jonquilla and Gandis narcissus grapes are hardy in our areas. And there are lots of different colors and petal types. Daffodils are also very deer and rodent resistant. So if you have issues with deer, maybe you should forget about tulips and go for the daffodils. There are lots of what they call minor bulbs, which I think is a very bad name for this wonderful group of flowering bulbs. There's crocus, rock garden iris, snowdrops, quill, canadoxa or glory of the snow, grape hyacinths, Spanish bluebells, fertilities, and summer snowdrops, which are slightly different than the early blooms. All of those are wonderful bulbs. I think they call them minor because they tend to have smaller flowers than the other bulbs. But hey, if you plant enough of them, you'll get the job done. All right, so let's look at some of these. So this picture right here, well, yeah, I can't show, oh, there we go. This picture here is a squill, which is a very early blooming bulb and is very, very hardy. Here we have Glory of the Snow, another really early bloomer that is knocked down hardy and very easy to grow. Most of these, what they call minor bulbs, are pretty much plant them and forget them bulbs that will come back every year for you. Great hyacinth, you see lots of those in uh, gardens in Wyoming. Spanish bluebells, fertilities, which they have lots of different ones. And the fertilities, Spanish bluebells, and summer snowdrops tend to like a little bit of shade. So if you have more shade in your yard, you should look at those. There are also lilies, crown imperials, and alliums. Any of these you can grow in your yard, although the crown imperials do uh, prefer a bit more um, protected area than most bulbs. Then we have autumn blooming crocus. So yes, there are crocus that bloom in the fall. Last year, mine bloomed in November. So it's kind of nice to have something, you know, when you go out there, it's cold. It's you know, you're getting your garden almost ready to close up for the year and you find a little blooming treasure. I kind of like those for that reason. And the saffron crocus, this is exactly the crocus that they use to get the spiced saffron. So a few red things you see in there are the stipes. Those are what they harvest for saffron. So if you want to get your seasons and harvest some of those, that is the most expensive spice in the world. And yes, you can grow it here. So how to plant. Now that you've decided which bulbs you want, you should uh, start thinking about how to plant them. Most bulbs, as a general rule of thumb, should be planted at depths three to four times the widest part of the bulb. So if you've got a three inch wide bulb, that should be planted about nine inches deep. So generally speaking, the bigger the bulb, the deeper you should plant it. There are some exceptions though on the more exotic things. So read the information on your bulb package. It should have that on there. Most bulbs have a pointy end and a blunt end. Often there are dried up roots on the blunt end. So the blunt end goes down and the pointy end goes up. If some corms look kind of like dried raisins and really have no uh, distinguishing marks. So those I just plant as best I can in the bulb of dust from there. <clears throat> Fertilizers. Most bulbs appreciate an application of bulb food annually in the fall and some bulb meal when you plant them. Make sure to read the fertilizer package and apply accordingly. As with all fertilizers, more is not better. All right, bulb planting depths. Here's a handy little chart and it's showing, you know, you can see that generally the bigger the bulb, the deeper it should be planted. Keep that in mind. And landscaping with bulbs. What I hate to see when I see a bulb garden is a bunch of little tulips in a row like little soldiers. They look best when massed together in groups, at least I think. So pick a spot that has appropriate light level for the bulbs that you want to plant. There are many good resources you can always Google if you're not sure if a bulb likes sun or shade. Either, there's two ways to plant. You can either dig a wide hole or holes about six to eight inches inches deep for large bulbs or get out your 
corded drill fitted with a large diameter standard cord perks the bit and start drilling holes. Put the pointy up, end up, the roots down, sprinkle with bulb fertilizer or bone meal, cover with soil, and tank down. That's right. With the wide holes, you can do kind of a layer cake approach to planting bulbs. Put some big bulbs in, put some soil on, put some smaller bulbs in, put more soil and fill the hole and fill. fill. So here you see somebody who's lining their bulbs up. I don't, generally don't care for that, but if that's what you like, okay. I tend to prefer this approach where different colors are kind of grouped together, intermingled with some perennials. And the reason I like that is because when bulbs start dying back, they usually have some ugly yellowing foliage. And a lot of people want to cut that off. You don't want to cut that off because if you cut that off, you're reducing the size and number of flowers you will have next spring because that is when the bulb is putting energy toward next year's flowers. So here's the way I was talking about a bulb lasagna. You can choose bulbs that will all bloom roughly at the same time, or you can choose bulbs that will bloom at different times for a longer period of time. You can build small groups of bulbs to interplant with your existing landscape, or you can go hog hog and put in a layered bulb family garden. So there's lots of ways to incorporate bulbs into your garden. <clears throat> Generally speaking, if you want to layer the bulb into a bulb lasagna, there, the bulbs fall into four groups here in order from earliest to latest blooming. Group one is the very early small or minor bulbs that we discussed earlier, snowdrop, crocus, reticulata iris, and so on. Group two are the early bulbs, mostly tulips. Group three are the mid-seasons, usually the narcissus and allium. And group four are the late bulbs, which are usually the lilies. You don't have to use all four groups at once. You can leave out even one or two groups and still have a good display, but your bloom period will likely be shorter. So if you're having trouble narrowing down what you want to plant, it can be very useful to go with just the color scheme. That can be really useful to create a unified look in any garden. It can be, the color scheme can be anything you like. If you're not sure what you like, my recommendation is to look online or through gardening magazines and a catalog to see what attracts you. You'll probably find yourself attracted to the same colors over and over again. In my case, I tend to like purple and yellow, so that's what I go with. If you like red and green, that's fine, you know, whichever colors you like. There are some general um, situations to keep in mind. If you're planting a shade garden, light colors or white will show up at better in the shade. If you have a light or white colored house, bright or dark colors will show up better against the house. And if you have a dark colored house, vice versa, you want to go with white colors, light colors. If you like it, it's the right color scheme for you. Once you have a scheme and a planting area selected, now you get to do the fun part, select the bulb. Start looking for bulbs that meet your criteria. The colors that you selected, hardiness, I would recommend at least hardy to zone four, sun or shade bulbs, succession or simultaneous bloom. Make a list and start down, narrowing down your uh, selections. I like to use a bulb bloom time chart and the color collage can be helpful. So by collage, I mean just get pictures on the internet and start putting them together to see if the bulb you selected look good. Here's one that I did for a client, and I think those look good together. Just put them next to each other and see if they play well together. And here's a bulb time chart. If you have an Excel on your computer, you can just start filling it in so you can see if you've got any bloom time gaps or anything to, that you need. You can also, if you're not still not sure and want to try it out in a small situation, you can try it out in a large flower pot. You can do your layering lasagna in a flower pot, water it, put it in a shady area and keep it watered over the winter. And see if that combination looks good when it blooms. or you can try it in a larger pot, uh, pot, in this case, a whiskey barrel. I would not recommend using terracotta pots because they will break. 
All right. While bulbs are low maintenance, they do appreciate a little TLC. Occasionally, they will get too overgrown. This is especially true of daffodils, and they may need to be dug up and divided. This can be done as the foliage yellows after blooming. They do appreciate a little bulb food in the fall and again in the spring. If you want them to be perennial, the foliage must be allowed to yellow and die back naturally. We already talked about that. That's when the bulb is putting on size and storing energy for next year's flowers. If you want them to be perennial, you shouldn't cut the blooms. If you want a separate cutting garden, you should treat that as an annual garden and plant that every fall. You should, if they appear, remove any seed heads because they also take energy away from the bulb. So here's an, I'm gonna show you several combinations that I thought were particularly nice. This is an all white combination with white tulips, white grape hyacinths and uh, anemone blanda. I thought that was quite nice. You noted white, see, you don't have to go screaming loud with colors to get a nice combination. Although I myself like gaudy. There we go. Here's a purple, orange, and yellow combination I thought was nice. And that's just two things. It's a purple crocus and a uh, variegated tulip. Looks like a gradient because it has the dirty modeling on the foliage. Here's a white crocus in that same variegated tulip. Also nice. And here's a yellow and white kind of lemon meringue pie combination against the persithia, also very nice. And they sprinkled in a little blue great hyacinth for some contrast. There's a pretty combination of purple tulips, daffodils, and great hyacinths, kind of a wild name meadow kind of a look. And here's a pink tulip and blue great hyacinth combination I thought was also nice. Here we have some with some later bulbs, some large tulips, and a lot of anemones. Uh, not anemones, alleys. All right, any questions? And I can give you the, um, if you want to buy some tulips from the um, 2020 bulb sale, you can get many Cheyenne Hardy selections and they're Color, also color, color coordinated bulb groupings, go to lcmgorg.org for an order form and more information, or you can ask me questions. That would be fine too. All right, that's the end of the slideshow. Any questions?